This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. The pressure is growing for special counsel Robert Mueller to wrap his investigation into Russian collusion by September 1st. Amber Strong takes a look at the president's team's legal strategy and their calls for a quick to end rather to the Russia probe. Over the weekend, the president once again took aim at Attorney General Jeff Sessions over Robert Mueller's Russia probe. I have never seen anything so rigged in my life. Our AG is scared stiff and missing in action, the president tweeted from his golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey. Presidential advisor Kellyanne Conway says the president is frustrated with what he sees as a lopsided investigation. The gravamen of his tweets, John, are that he wants to make sure we're investigating all sides of, of, of the so-called Russian collusion. Senator Lindsey Graham also backing the president and calling for an investigation into the investigation. Graham is citing a conflict of interest for Bruce Orr, a high-ranking Justice Department official who had connections to the research firm Fusion GPS that helped compile the dossier that helped lead to the Russia investigation. When it came to the Trump campaign, it was corrupt, it was biased, and I think unethical. Mr. Orr should not have had, had any role in investigating the Trump campaign because his wife worked at Fusion GPS. Meanwhile, Trump's legal team is putting pressure on the special counsel to wrap up his investigation before the midterms. There is a Justice Department practice, and he's bound by it, that to the best you can, you shouldn't be carrying these things on right before an election. Trump's attorney Rudy Giuliani also says the president did not instruct former FBI Director James Comey to take it easy on National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, an apparent about face from his earlier remarks, something Giuliani denies. So you're saying that President Trump and James Comey never discussed Michael Flynn? That, that is what he will testify to if he's asked that question. That 2017 Comey conversation is important and said to be a major factor in the special counsel's investigation into whether or not the president obstructed justice. Regardless, Giuliani says the president won't answer any questions when it comes to firing the former FBI director. Amber Strong, CBN News in Washington. Here's a look now at some of the other major headlines we're following for you today inside the CBN newsroom. North Korea and South Korea have announced a September meeting between Kim Jong-un and President Jae-in, Moon Jae-in. The meeting will be the third summit since April and comes amid renewed worries surrounding a nuclear standoff between the United States and North Korea. The two sides did not mention exact dates for the summit and provided no details on how to implement past agreements. Firefighters in California were able to make progress on the holy fire burning in south, south of Los Angeles, temperatures dropped slightly over the weekend and firefighters were able to contain the blaze at 41 percent. The blaze burned across 35 square miles, destroyed 16 structures and prompted 20,000 people to evacuate. The holy fire is one of 20 fires raging across the state. Former presidential advisor Omarosa Manigault Newman is under fire after she said in an interview on NBC Sunday she secretly recorded conversations she had in the White House. Parts of her conversation were played on the air. One of those included her, fi her, her firing by Chief of Staff John Kelly in the high security situation room where cell phones and other recording devices are not allowed. Security experts denounced the recordings as a serious breach of ethics and security. Manigault Newman said she viewed the conversation with Kelly as a threat and defended her decision to covertly record it. She says there's a tape, tape using the N-word during filming for The Apprentice and that she believes that he is a racist. President Trump on Saturday labeled Manigault Newman a lowlife. For more on these stories and others throughout the day, you can always visit CBNNews.com. Minnesota Congressman and Deputy Director of the DNC, Keith Ellison, is defending himself against an allegation of domestic violence. Austin Aslam Mahanan posted to Facebook over the weekend that he watched a video in which Ellison dragged his mother, Karen, off a bed and yelled profanities at her. Karen Mahanan confirmed her son's allegations. In a statement, Ellison says he was in a relationship with Karen that ended in 2016. He says the video does not exist because, quote, I never behaved in this way, end quote. Ellison is a rising star in the Democratic Party and currently running for attorney general in Minnesota. 
Hamas called a truce with Israel in Gaza Thursday, but it ended shortly after it began. Thousands of Palestinians rioted Friday along the border fence and three people reportedly killed. Although the rockets have stopped for now, Hamas sent more flaming balloons and kites into Israel, causing fires that damaged a nature reserve. UN officials still are trying to work out a long-term ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, but Israel's patience is wearing thin. After Sunday's cabinet meeting, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel knows what it will do if the attacks don't stop. There's an exchange of blows and it won't end with a single strike. Our approach is clear, a complete ceasefire. We won't be satisfied with less than that. Until now, we've destroyed hundreds of Hamas military targets. In every round of attacks, the Israeli Defense Forces have inflicted another heavy toll on Hamas. I won't disclose our operational plans here. They're ready. Back here at home in the U.S., thousands of people packed the NASA launch site in Cape Canaveral, Florida, Sunday to see off a spaceship that's heading to the sun. Well, at least closer than any rocket ever sent before. The Parker Solar Probe is on its way to the outer solar atmosphere just 6 million kilometers from the sun's surface. It's protected by a cutting-edge new heat shield and will make 24 close approaches to the sun over the next seven years. Its first encounter is set for November. The spacecraft is named for 91-year-old astrophysicist Eugene Parker, who proposed the existence of a solar wind 60 years ago. He was, he was there to see that off. CBN's national security correspondent Eric Osales shows us why this mission is so important to all of us here on, the U here on Earth. Inside one of the clean rooms here at the Goddard Space Flight Center sits the Parker Solar Probe, an unmanned spacecraft that will travel through the sun's atmosphere. The Parker spacecraft, named famously for astrophysicist Eugene Parker, will go closer to the sun than any man-made object ever put in space. The more I study, uh, the heliosphere, the more I study, even near the sun environment where no human being lives, and I don't think anybody is planning to, uh, the more I find the glories of God, that he designed it for us. For more than a decade, NASA scientist Adam Subbo has been working on the $1.6 billion Parker Solar Probe mission. He says he sees God's hand in the wonders of space, and even our existence here on Earth couldn't happen, Subbo says, without a divine creator. When I look at that, how much energy there is in the sun. All that energy is uh, co coming toward us, yet that energy is extremely dangerous if, it, if we were just exposed to it. Look at this uh, spacecraft. Just to fly by there, we had to take extreme protective measures just for uh, robotic stuff to survive, never mind human beings. Scientists say the probe about the size of a small car is equipped with a four and a half inch thick carbon heat shield. It will allow the craft to survive temperatures of 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, impacts by supersonic particles as it travels at speeds of 500,000 miles per hour, and make it able to endure powerful radiation as it circles the sun. During these encounters, the, space, the, the TPS has to face the sun all the time. We cannot afford large excursion. It will cause, cause problems. Just a and, degree. Yes. It will Tough. cause problems. Yes, and we don't want that. Data sent back to Earth will help scientists figure out why the sun's atmosphere, known as the corona, is hotter than the sun's surface. The sun, when you're on the surface, you're a balmy 10,000 degrees. You get out into the atmosphere, it's two to three million degrees. And it's unlike any other body in the solar system. Once the probe is launched from Earth in order to reach its correct orbit around the sun, it will fly around Venus seven times in order to slow down. It's expected to orbit the sun 24 times over the next seven years, edging closer on each pass. Six onboard instruments will also measure the sun's electric and magnetic fields, as well as its solar winds and other phenomena. Space weather may not sound like something that concerns us here on Earth, but scientists estimate solar events that happen without warning could cause trillions of dollars in damage in the U.S. And serious coronal mass ejection, or CME, could leave parts of the country without power for a year or more. The corona can, do, can throw us things at us that can harm us. Imagine one of these big CMEs or flares erupt on the sun and it's hurtling toward us to Earth. 
it can cause a lot of damage. Yes, we have a whole bunch of expectations and we lay out, laid out all the level one requirements and these are the questions we're going to answer. These are the measurements that we will do. And then we go there and then we invariably find that, oh, this is completely different. We have a completely new paradigm. So I'm looking forward to these unexpected discoveries that I can't even imagine yet. Eric Rosales, CBN News. A series of powerful earthquakes have left hundreds of Indonesians dead and thousands injured on the island of Lombok. Within hours, CBN's Operation Blessing Indonesia team was in the earthquake zone, bringing help to those people in need. Our Gary Lane is bringing us the story. The initial quake measured 6.9 on the Richter scale, and within several days, the people of Lombok were struck with two more devastating tremors. In addition to the dead and injured, at least 20,000 people are homeless. The island of Lombok is near Bali, a popular vacation spot. It's in the eastern part of the country, along the rim of the Pacific Ring of Fire. CBN's regional director for Southeast Asia, Mark McClendon, is leading the Operation Blessing relief effort. He says people are frightened the earth may shake again. The collective trauma of three earthquakes in a row has caused tens of thousands of people to choose to sleep outdoors. Nobody wants to sleep inside. Even the, the largest hospital on the island now is on the brink of collapse and all of the patients are in the parking lot under tents. And it's into this situation that Operation Blessing doctors and nurses have come to bring medical help and relief. This man named Bori came to an Operation Blessing base camp looking for help. An OB medical team responded immediately and were shocked to find hundreds of people in the village of Gorong Anyur in desperate need of medical attention. A third earthquake destroyed almost every house in the village, leaving many people traumatized and wounded. The entire village is now sleeping outside. But the Operation Blessing team didn't just bring doctors to bandage the wounds and medicines to take away pain and sickness. They also brought hope and trauma relief. I felt so sorry because no medical help had come for my village. So I finally went to find help. I am so happy and deeply thankful for the team that came to our village today. McClendon says more help is on the way. More medical teams, blankets, food, water, tarps, everything that we can do and share to help ease the suffering of these people on the island of Lombok. Gary Lane, CBN News. Still to come, she has a very different mission field. People driving down the highway every day and her home base is a bakery. We're going to bring you the unusual story on CBN News Watch. It's coming up right after this. Tara McGraw is planting seeds for Christ on a street corner in Dallas. Now, she's not a sidewalk evangelist or part of a ministry to the homeless. She's a Czech bakery owner, and commuters headed towards the Dallas North Tollway each morning are her customers and her mission field. Caitlin Burke brings us the story. Oh, Zemiko Kalatis, it came from my grandma. And if you come to Dallas, you gotta get you some. It's nearly impossible to drive past this shop unaware. Oh, Zemiko Kalachis, one taste and you'll agree. It's the best kalachi because the Lord gave it to me. Hey! Tara McGraw opened the Zemical Kalachi Bakery here less than a year ago, although Texans have enjoyed the Czech dessert for decades. A kalachi is a type of pastry that holds fruit, chocolate, or even cream cheese. Fruit is my personal favorite, and the Zemical recipe has been perfected. Making the same treats her ancestors first brought to Texas wasn't McGraw's career plan, but it was the dream of her mom, who's also responsible for the song. Hours, she would do that, hours. I don't know where she got the energy. When I first opened, the cars would pass and no one looked from side to side. They were mainly interested in, am I gonna catch the signal light or not? So I just got out there with my towel and just basically started waving at them. And then in my waving, I just got bored and started uh, making up a tune and it got rhythmic and the Zemeckel Kalach song was born. My mother had more energy than anyone I have ever met in my life. She had a very big personality. She was bubbly. She was the lady and when she walked into the room, that's when the party started. And she did everything. She could do anything. And when she decided she was going to do the kolaches, 
she was going to do it big. So she got into it and uh, she had fun. That was in Calvert, Texas, a small town between College Station and Waco. Locals lovingly knew her as the crazy kolache lady. Oh, that's beautiful. But then she got sick. And in 2015, Jody Powers lost her battle with leukemia. The store closed. I ended up with a bakery full of equipment and I didn't know what to do with it. So I thought, well, we can bake kolaches. At first, Tara considered the move a gift to her late mother. Then she realized the bakery was really a gift for her. She sang her song. It's the best kolache cause the Lord gave it to me. Hey. And I thought, okay, God gave this to her and God gave this to me. So I'm going to go and take it. I'm going to sing the song. And it's just a way that uh, we sort of spread the word a little bit. But she found out that getting things up and running wouldn't be easy. Tara faced a pretty steep learning curve. When my mom was alive, I would not learn to make the clutches because she was sick and I wanted her to make the kolaches. I wanted her to live and to make them. My aunt came and she helped uh, get the place going, but then it was time for her to go back to Houston where she's from, and I still didn't really know how to do it all that well. I knew the steps and I'd done them one at a time, but I had to take all the steps and put them together. So I got in there and I said, okay, here we go. Here we go, mom, let's do this. And first time, they came out great. Now that she's got the hang of things, Tara's taking her mom's dream and building on it. So we're getting set up with a whole bunch of different lines of fudge and we're gonna be doing fresh baked pies because we already do the fruit fillings for our kolaches. So then the crazy kolache lady of Calvert, Texas lives on. Reminders of her placed all over the bakery, including her endless energy and personality. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Dallas, Texas. Still ahead, she's been nominated for Dove Awards and for New Artist of the Year and Contemporary Gospel Urban Recorded Song of the Year. We're talking to Corinne Hawthorne up next. Corinne Hawthorne has just been nominated Artist of the Year and Contemporary Gospel Urban Recorded Song of the Year. We talked to the Dove nominee about that song and her newest music project. Make it rain. Let the clouds fill with thunderous applause. Let the lightning be the vein. It's to make a change. I, of course, saw you on The Voice, as many people did. Well, we are now enjoying a new project from you, Unstoppable. Yes. Why Unstoppable? Why Unstoppable? Well, I have a song on the album called Unstoppable. So, of course, we recorded that first, and then they came and asked me what I felt a good name would be. And I don't know, I just felt like it would be the perfect name. I kind of feel like throughout the course of my life, you know, like I said before, God has always orchestrated my steps. And um, it just kind of seems like no matter what has happened, no matter people, their opinions that they try to throw on me, directions that they try to plant me in, my purpose still remained the same. And it's almost like that's unstoppable. It's not really about me, not to put the emphasis on me like I'm unstoppable, but the purpose that God has over my life is unstoppable and nobody can stop that. So with this album, I kind of just want to encourage other people in that because everybody has a purpose. And I feel like in this time, it's necessary to find out what your purpose is and be unstoppable in it. So. That's what I'm just trying to do. <laughs> You're doing you know, it. You're doing it. Bring awareness. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You work with some pretty uh, big names on, on this project. Tell me about some of your producers. For sure. So Grammy Award winning producer Bernie Herms. Love him. Grammy Award winning producer Warren Campbell. I work with Vaughn. I work with um, Aaron Lindsay, who's a Grammy Award winning writer. The list goes on. Makiba Riddy, Grammy Award winning writer. And I just, I'm super thankful to be able to work with people of their caliber this early in the game. Yeah, like this is my first, first album. Yeah. So 
you know, God is good. <laughs> All Won't the time. Won't he do it? Yes, he <laughs> will. So yeah, I'm excited. I love that. Uh, you also made an appearance on Greenleaf, I saw. Tell me about that, how that all came about for you. Um, so this was a, such a crazy process. They, my, the head of my label, Phil Thornton, shout out to him, he called me, he was like, Corinne, they want you to be a part of the soundtrack, they want you to be on an episode. I didn't have anything out yet. Wow. So I was just literally just got signed to my label. Um, I'm just like, okay, well, thank you, Lord. You know, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I was super excited for the opportunity. Um, went over there to Atlanta. They sent me Won't He Do It um, for the soundtrack. And I just was like, this is such a great song. Went in the studio. All I remember was my mind frame in the studio. Like, you know what? Every single time I record a song, I want it to feel like it's mine, whether I wrote it or not. I don't want it to come across as a cover song. And the song related so much to my life that I just remember being in the studio like, God, thank you for what you're doing in a, in a spirit of gratefulness. And I kind of just wanted it to transfer over into the song, into the track. So being on set was incredible. The <laughs> cast was just very welcoming. And I, I kind of, um, I just like to see different worlds. Like I'm a singer, so you know, I'm very involved in my world, but I thought it was cool to kind of experience an actor's world. So that was really cool, but you know, Won't He Do It, that's how Won't He Do It came about. So that's incredible, incredible experience. If you could look in the mirror at the younger you, what advice would you say to that little Corinne about what's to come? Stay focused and trust God. I mean, I feel like I did that, but you know, I like I really would kind of instill it, like trust God through everything. Like, I feel like that's the most important advice that you can give anybody because we doubt and sometimes we get in our heads and that causes us to make the wrong decisions because we want to go our own way. So trust God, girl, he got you. <laughs> I like it, I like it. A living example of trusting God. Her new album, Unstoppable, is available right now. We'll be right back. Time now for your Monday motivation. I pray this will jumpstart your week and encourage you to make every day, wake up every day with a great expectation. Your Today is a great day for you to be a blessing that you need for someone else. You are blessed to be a blessing with that word. I encourage you to make this a marvelous Monday and a wonderful rest of the week. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Remember, you can get more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. And we love to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can do that by emailing newswatch at CBN.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. Remember, the news continues 24-7 at CBNNews.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow.